Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. Now, when it was the eight hundred and seventy-first night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the merchants bid one against the other till they made the price of the girl nine hundred and fifty dinars. Then the broker went up to her Persian master and said to him, The biddings for this thy slave girl have reached nine hundred and fifty dinars, so say me, wilt thou sell her at that price and take the money? Asked the Persian, Does she consent to this? I desire to fall in with her wishes, for I sickened on my journey hither, and this handmaid tended me with all possible tenderness. Wherefore I swear not to sell her, but to whom, him whom she would like and approve. And I have put her sale in her own hand, so do thou consult with her, and if she say I consent, sell her to whom thou wilt. But an she say no, sell her not. So the broker went up to her, and asked her, O princess of fair ones, know that thy master putteth thy sale in thine own hands, and thy price hath reached nine hundred and fifty dinars. Dost thou give me leave to sell thee? She answered, Show me he who is minded to buy me before clinching the bargain. So he brought her up to one of the merchants, a man stricken with years, and decrepit, and she looked at him a long while, then turned to the broker and said to him, O broker! Art thou gin mad or afflicted in thy wit? Replied he, Why dost thou ask me this, O princess of fair ones? And she said, Is it permitted thee of Allah to sell the like of me to yonder decrepit old man, who saith of his wife's case these couplets? Quoth she to me, and sore enraged for wounded pride was she, for she in sooth had bidden me to that which might not be. And if thou swerve me not forthright, as one who swive his wife, Thou be made a cuckold straight, reproach it not to me. Meseems thy yard is made of wax by thy flaxedness, for when I rub it with my hand it softens instantly. And said he likewise to his yard, I have a yard that sleeps in base and shameful way, when grants my lover boon for which I sue and pray. But when I wake o mornings all alone in bed, tis fain or foin and fence and fierce for futter play. And again quoth he thereof of his yard, I have a froward yard of temper ill, dishonouring him who shows it most regard. It stands when sleep I, when I stand, it sleeps. Heaven pity not who pitieth that yard. When the old merchant heard this ill flouting from the damsel, he was wroth with rage, exceeding beyond which no pro proceeding, and said to the broker, A most ill omen of brokers, thou hast not brought me into the market this ill-conditioned wench, but to give me and make mockery of me before the merchants. Then the broker took her aside and said to her, O my lady, be not wanting in self-respect. The sheikh at whom thou didst mock is the syndicate of the bazaar and the inspector thereof, and a committee man of the council of the merchants. But she laughed and improvised these two couplets. It be who with folk who rule in our time, and tis one of the duties of magistrateship, to hang up the wali upon above his door and beat with a whip the mutasip, adding, By Allah. O oh, my lord, I will not be sold to yonder old man, so sell me to other than him, for haply he will be abashed at me and vend me again, and I shall become a mere servant, and it beseemeth not that I sully myself with menial service, and indeed thou knowest that the matter of my cell is committed to myself. He replied, I hear and obey, and carried her to a man which was one of the chief merchants, and when standing hard by him the broker asked, How stayest thou, O oh, my lady? Shall I sell thee to Lord Sheriff Aldin, here for nine hundred and fifty gold pieces? She looked at him, and seeing him to be an old man with a dyed beard, said to the broker, Art thou silly, that, that thou would sellest me to this worn-out father antic? I am cotton refuse, or threadbare rags, that thou marchest me about from a grey beard to grey beard, each like a wall ready to fall on an ifrit smitten down of a fireball? As for the first, the poet had him in mind when he said, I sought of a fair maid to kiss her lips of coral red, but no, by him who fashioned things from nothingness, she said, and to the white of hoary hairs I never had a mind, and shall my mouth be stuffed forsooth with cotton ere I'm dead? And how goodly is the saying of the poet. The wise have said that white hair is light that shines and robes, the face of man with majesty and light that awes the sight. Yet until hoary seal shall stamp my parting place of hairs, I hope and pray that same may be blackened as the blackest night. 
I'll be time white and beard of man, be like the book he bears. When to his lord he must return, I'd rather twere not white. And yet goodlier is the saying of another. A guest hath stolen on my head, and honour may he lack. The sword, a milder deed, hath done that dared these locks to hack. Avaunt, O whiteness, wherein not of brightness glad in sight, thou the blacker on the eyes of me than very blackest black. As for the other, he is a model of wantonness and scurliness, and a black man of the face of hoariness. His dye acteth the foulest of lies, and the tongue of his case reciteth these lines. Quoth she to me, I see thou diest thy hoariness, and I, I do but hide it from thy sight, O thou mine ear and eye. She laughed out mockingly, and said, A wonder tis indeed. Thou so aboundest in deceit, that even thy hair's a lie. And how excellent is the saying of the poet. O thou who diest hoariness with black, that youth with thee abide at least in show. Look ye, my lot was dyed black Wilhelm, and, take my word, none other hue twill grow. When the old man with the dyed beard heard such words from the slave girl, he raged with exceeding rage in fury's last stage, and said to the broker, O oh, most ill omen of brokers, this day thou hast brought to our market not save this giving baggage to flout at all who are therein, one after the other, and flare at them with flighting verse and idle jest. And he came down from his shop and smote on the face of the broker, who took her in anger and carried her away, saying to her, By Allah, never in my life saw I a more shameless wench than thyself. Thou hast cut off my daily bread and thine own this day, and all the merchants will bear me a grudge on thine account. Then they saw on the way a merchant called Ship Alden, who bid ten dinars more for her, and the broker asked her leave to sell her to him. Quoth she, Trot him out, and I may see him, and question him of a certain thing, which, if he have in his house, I will be sold to him, and if not, then not. So the broker left her standing there, and going up to Ship al -Din, said to him, O my lord, know that yonder damsel tells me she hath a mind to ask thee somewhat, which an thou have she will be sold to thee. Now thou hast heard what she said to thy fellows, the merchants. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now when it was the eight hundred and seventy-second night, she had continued, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the broker said to the merchant, Thou hast heard what this handmaid said to thy fellows, the traders, and by Allah I fear to bring her to thee, lest she do with thee like as she did with thy neighbors, and so I fall into disgrace with thee. But an thou bid bring her to thee, I will bring her, quoth the merchant, hither with her to me. Hearing and obeying, answered the broker, and fetched for the purchaser the damsel, who looked at him and said, O my lord, Shibab al Din, hast thou in thy house round cushions stuffed with ermine strips? replied Shibab al Din. Yes, O princess of fair ones, I have at home half a score such cushions. But I conjure thee by Allah, tell me, what wilt thou do with them? quoth she. I will bear with them till thou be asleep, when I will lay on them on thy mouth and nose and press them down till thou die. Then she turned to the broker and said to him, O thou refuse of brokers, meseemeth thou art mad, and that thou showest me this hour past first to a pair of grey beards, in which each of whom are two faults, and then thou proferest me to Lord Shibab al Din, wherein be three defects. Firstly, he is dwarfish. Secondly, he hath a nose which is big. And thirdly, he hath a beard which is long. Of him quoth one of the poets, We never heard of white, nor yet espied who amid men three gifts hath unified, to wit, a beard one cubit long, a snout span long, and a figure tall, a figure wide. And quoth another poet, From the plane of his face springs a minaret, like a bezel of ring on his finger set. Did creation enter that vasty nose? No created thing would elsewhere be met. And Shibhab al-Din heard this, he came down from his shop and seized the broker by the collar, saying, O oh, scurviest of brokers, what aileth thee to bring us a damsel to flout and make mock of us, one after the other, with her verses, and talk that a curse is? So the broker took her and carried her away from before him, and fared, saying, By Allah, 
all my life long since I have plied this profession, never set I eyes on the like of thee of unmanliness, nor aught more cursed to me than thy star, for thou hast cut off my livelihood this day, and I have gained no profit by thee, save cuffs on the neck nape, and catching by the collar. Then he brought her to the shop of another merchant, owner of negro slaves and white servants, and stationing her before him, said to her, Wilt thou be sold to this my lord, Allah al Din? She looked at him, and seeing his hump back, said, This is a gobo, and quoth the poet of him, Drawn in thy shoulders are, and spine thrust out, as seeking star which Satan gave the lout. Or, if he tasted, had first smack of scourge, and looked in marvel for a second bout. And saith another on the same theme, As one of you who mounted mule, a sight for men to ridicule, is it not a farce, who feels surprise, and start and bold with him the mule? And another on a similar subject. Oft hunchback addeth to his bunchy back, False which gar folk upon his front look black, Like branch distort and dried by length of days, With citrons hanging from it loose and slack. With this the broker hurried up to her, And carrying her to another merchant, said to her, Wilt thou be sold to this man? She looked at him and said, In very sooth, this man is blue-eyed, How wilt thou sell me to him? with one of the poets. His eyelids sore and bleared, weakness of frame denote. Arise, she folk, and see within his eyes the moat. Then the broker carried her to another, and she looked at him, and seeing that he had a long beard, said to the broker, Fie upon thee! This is a ram whose tail hath sprouted from his skull. Wilt thou sell me to him, O unluckiest of brokers? Hast thou not heard say, All long of beard are little of wits? Indeed, after the measure of the length of the beard is the lack of sense. This is a well-known thing among men of understanding, as saith one of the poets. Ne'er was a man with beard grown over long, though be he therefore reverenced and feared, but with a shortness note in his wits added to the longness noted in his beard. And quoth another, I have a friend with a beard which God hath made to grow to a useless length. It is like unto one of the nights of winter long and dark and cold. With this the broker took her and turned away with her, and she asked, Whither goest thou with me? He answered, Back to thy master the Persian. It suffices me what hath befallen me because of thee this day, for thou hast been the means of spoiling both my trade and his by thine ill manners. Then she looked upon the market right and left, and front and rear, till by decree of the decree her eyes fell on Ali Nur al Din the Kareen. So she gazed him, and saw him to be a comely youth of straight, slim form, and smooth of face, fourteen years old, rare in beauty and loveliness, and elegance, and amorous grace like the full moon on the fourteenth night, with forehead flower-white, and cheeks rosy-red, neck like alabaster, and teeth like jewels finer, and dews of lips sweeter than sugar, even as saith of him one of his describers." came to match him in beauty and loveliness rare, full moons and gazelles, but quoth I, soft fair, fair softly gazelles, nor yourself compare with him, and O moons all your pains forbear. And how well saith another bard, slim-waisted loveling from his hair and brow, men wake a morn and night, and light renewed. Blame not the mole that dwelleth on his cheek, for Numan's bloom I show spot negro-hued. When the slave girl beheld Nur al Din, he interposed between her and her wits. She fell in love to him with a great and sudden fall, and her heart was taken with affection for him. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the eight hundred and seventy third night, she pursued, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when the slave girl beheld Nur al Din, her heart was taken with affection for him. So she turned to the broker and said to him, Will not yonder young merchant, who is sitting among the traders in the gown of striped brocade, bid somewhat more for me? The broker replied, O lady of fair ones, yonder young man is a stranger from Cairo, where his father is chief of the trader guild, and surpasseth all the merchants and notables of the place. He has but lately come to this city, and lodged with one of our father's friends, but he hath made no bid for thee, nor more nor less. 
when the girl heard of the broker's words, she drew from him finger a costly signet ring of ruby and said to the man, Carry me to yonder youth, and if he buy me, this ring shall be thine, in requital of thy travail with me this day. The broker rejoiced at this, and brought her up to Nur al Din, and she considered him straightly and found him like the full moon, perfect in loveliness, and a model of fine stature and symmetric grace, even as saith of him one of his describers. Waters of beauty o'er his cheeks flow bright, and rain his glances shafts that sorely smite. Choked are his lovers, as he deal disdains, bitterest draw, denaying love delight. His forehead and his stature and my love are perfect, perfected, perfection dight. His raiment folds enfold a lovely neck, as crescent moon and collar buttoned tight. His eyes and twied moles and tears of me are night that nighteth to the nightliest night. His eyebrows and his features of my frame, crescents on crescents are crescents slight. His pupils pass the wine cup to his friends, which all be sweet taste bitter to my sprite. And to my thirsty throat pure drink he dwelt from smiling lips what day we were unite. This is my blood to him, my death to him, his right and rightful and more righteous right. The girl gazed at Nur al-Din, and said, O my lord Allah, upon thee, am I not beautiful? And he replied, O princess of fair ones, is there in the world a comelier than thou? She rejoined, Then why seest thou all the other merchants bid high for me, and art silent, nor sayest a word, neither addest one dinar to my price? Twould seem I please thee not, O my lord, quoth he. O oh, my lady, were I in my own land, I had bought thee with all that my hand possesses of monies. And quoth she, O oh, my lord, I said not, buy me against thy will, yet didst thou but put anything to my price, it would hearten my heart. Though thou buy me not, so the merchants may say, were not this girl handsome yonder merchant of Cairo, had not bidden for her for the Karenister connoisseurs and slave girls. These words abashed Nur al -Din, and he blushed and said to the broker, how high are the biddings for her? He replied, Her price hath reached nine hundred and sixty dinars. Besides brokerage, as for the sultan's dues, they fall on the seller. Quoth Nur al Din, Let me have her for a thousand dinars brokerage and price. And the damsel, hastening to the fore and leaving the broker, said, I sell myself to this handsome young man for a thousand dinars. But Nur al Din held his peace. Quoth one, We sell to him and another, he deserveth her, and a third, a cursed son of a cursed, is he who biddeth and doth not buy, and a fourth, by Allah, they bereft each other. Then before Nur al-Din could think, the broker fetched Kaziz and witnesses who wrote out a contract of sale and purchase, and the broker handed a paper to Nur al-Din, saying, Take thy slave girl, and Allah bless thee in her, for she beseemeth none but thee, and none but thou beseemeth her. And he recited these two couplets. Boon fortune sought him in the humblest way, and came to him draggle-tailed all astir, and none is fittest for him but she, and none is fittest but he for her. Hereat Nur al-Din was abashed before the merchant, so he arose without stay or delay, and weighed out the thousand dinars which he had left as a deposit with his friend's friend, the druggist, and taking the girl, carried her to the house wherein the sheikh had lodged him. When she entered and saw nothing but ragged patched carpets and worn-out rugs, she said to him, O oh my lord, hath I no value to thee, and am I not worthy that thou shouldest bear me to thine own house and home wherein are thy goods, that thou bringest me into thy servant's lodging? Why dost thou not carry me to thy father's dwelling? He replied, By Allah, O princess of the fair ones, this is my house wherein I dwell. But it belongeth to an old man, a druggist of this city, who hath set it apart for me, and lodged me therein. I told thee that I was a stranger, and that I am of the sons of Cairo city. She rejoined, O oh my lord, the least of houses suffices till thy return to thy native place. But Allah upon thee, O oh my lord, go now and fetch us somewhat of roast meat and wine and dried fruit and desserts. Quoth Nur al-Din, By Allah, O princess of fair ones, I had no money with me but the thousand dinars I paid down to thy price, nor possess I any other goods. The few dirhams I owned were spent by me yesterday. Quoth she, Hast thou no friend in this town of whom thou mayest borrow fifty dirhams, and bring them to me, that I may tell thee what thou should do with them? And he said, 
I have no intimate but the druggist. Then he betook himself forthright to the druggist and said to him, Peace be with thee, O uncle. He returned to Salam and said to him, O my son, what hast thou bought for a thousand dinars this day? Nur al-Din replied, I have bought a slave girl. And the Ulster rejoined, O my son, art thou mad that thou givest a thousand dinars for one slave girl? When I knew what kind of slave girl she is, said Nur al-Din, she is a damsel of the children of the Franks. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. And so do I cease my telling of this tale for today, till it be morrow.